Hi everyone, my name is Justin Manuel Pinafror. Uh, in today's video, we will be talking about a very very famous uh, writer, Francisco Chanel Jose. So, uh, Francisco Chanel Jose. Francisco Chanel Jose was a Filipino writer who was one of the most widely read in English language. A national artist of the Philippine for literature, which was bestowed upon him in 2001. Jose's novels and short stories de de depict the social under underpinnings of the class struggles and colonialism in Philippine society. So now we will be talking the youth of Francisco Chanel. Francisco Chanel was born in 1924 in Cabugawan, Pangasinan, Philippines. His father is Antonio Jose, was a Gripayan minister, and his mother, Sofia Chanel, was a dressmaker and was also selling food in the market. His family had fled from Ilocos to find more fertile soil to work and more freedom from the Spanish. The Philippines had been occupied by the Americans since the Spanish colonizers were driven out in 1898. Little Jose Chanel really loves to read books. Her mother even borrowed books from the house of officials in the town. He especially liked the classic novels like Cervantes' Don Quixote, but also the books of Jose Rizal. On his graduation day, as a little boy, Francisco went to the Rosales Elementary School, where in 8th grade, he wore a pair of self-made wooden shoes for the occasion. Two months later, he left his hometown at 13 years old to, to, to take the train to Manila. The National Library of the Philippines was then at the basement of the National Museum. During the World War II, um, I think 1939, during World War II, Chanel Jose, was, Chanel Jose worked for the U.S. Army Medical Corps in Northern Luzon. After the liberation, he studied at the University of Santo Tomas, the same university where Jose Rizal studied medicine during 1870s. The USA granted the independence of the Philippines on July 4, 1946. During the war in 1945, Chanel Jose, after finishing high school, worked for the U.S. Army Medical Corps in Northern Canada. So now we will be talking about uh, Francisco Chanel Jose's uh, first job. In university, he was already writing and publishing short stories for the college paper Varsitaria and later as a staff member of the Catholic Weekly, Commonweal. With his writing experience, he found a job assistant editor of the United States Information Service, or USIS, during 1948 or to 1949. From 1949 until during 1950s, he worked as an editor of, for the Manila Times. One of his colleagues was the young Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr who he had discussions about the re revolution that was necessary to bring changes for the country. While Francisco Chanel Jose was working for the Manila Times, he had also started to seriously write literary work, a literary work. Besides thinking about and working on a novel, he wrote a series of short stories that were published a magazine. These stories later became the novel 3, a, a part 2 of the Rosales saga. Which, which I will be discussing later. In 1950, in 1958, he was the founder of Pan Philippine Center and became its national secretary. Staying in Hong Kong, he became the managing editor of Asia Magazine, Manuel Ros in, in, of Asia Magazine. Manuel Rosales was born in Manila in 1937 and studied at the University of the Philippines known as Ateneo de Manila. Before becoming an information officer for the Colombo Plan Bureau in Ceylon, in 1962, he published his first novel, The Pretenders, which became part of the Rosales Saga, a series of five novels that describes a hundred years of Philippine history from the Spanish colonization to the Marcos era. So now, the very best part of uh, Chanel's, Mr. Chanel's life, which uh, I will be discussing about uh, his literatures, his novels, and um, his career of becoming one of the most famous Filipino 
writer. Coming back to Manila in 1964, after almost 10 years of traveling, he set up the bookshop called Solidaridad Bookshop, which is still open on Padre Fawad Street in Ermita. It is often called the best little bookstore in Asia. Aside from uh, his business of the Solidaridad Bookshop, uh, Francisco Chanel Jose keeps seeing much poverty in Manila. He also started an organization aimed to help uh, young dropouts from schools in slums of Tondo. Uh, Tondo is a very uh, is a place in uh, Metro Manila which has suffered great uh, poverty from the past and until today. For which he started a bookbinding shop to provide jobs. Uh, In 1965, Ferdinand Marcos became president of the Philippines, starting industrialization and infrastructure projects. The next years were, were also very productive for Chanel Jose. He started his own publishing company called the Solidaridad Publishing House. One of the publications was the Equinox the First, an anthology of new writing from the Philippines, which he is the one who edited. A year later, he started the Solidarity magazine, Current Affairs, Ideas and Arts, of which he was the publisher and editor. Now, in this part of the video, I will be discussing, I will be talking about uh, the Rosales Saga, or uh, Francisco Chanel Jose's one of the most famous series of artwork. So, the Rosales Saga. The Rosales Saga, also known as the Rosales Novels, is a series of five historical and political novels written by Filipino national artist Francisco Chanel Jose. Chronologically, it is composed of five interconnected novels, namely Poon, was published in 1984, Three, published in 1978, My Brother, My Executioner, published in 1973, The Pretenders, published in 1962, and Mass published in 1973. The Rosales Saga traced the five generations of two families, namely the Samsons, or the poor farmers, and the Asperi, the wealthy mestizos. Through Spanish and American periods in the history of Philippines until the period after the Philippine independence, Jose began writing the series in 1962 and completed it in 1984. Uh, fact about the Rosales Saga. Among all the artworks of Chanel Jose, one of the most notable works is The Pretenders, which is, which is the fourth uh, book of the Rosales Saga. The Pretenders is his most popular novel, which is the story of the man alienation from his poor background and the de de decadence of his wife's wealthy family. Jose Rizal's life and writing profoundly influenced Jose's work and that is one of the main factors that made The Pretenders his most famous novel. So for the last part of this uh, video, we will be talking about the no retirement of Francisco Chanel Jose. So uh, a lot of us think that by the time we grow old, uh, we retire, or we, or we rest and then we pass away. But uh, Francisco Chanel Jose uh, didn't retire. He got old, but despite being old, he still continued his career as a writer and as a, as a novel creator and as a man who, who loves writing books. So for his collective literary works, he received in 1989 the Cultural Center of the Philippine Award. That certainly did not mean that at the age of 65, he retired from writing. In 1991, he published Gagamba, The Spider-Man, which has been called a meditation on the meaning of life. In 1992, the book Three Filipino Women, which are novels, was published in New York by Random House. In 1993, he published the novel Viajero, or Traveler. In Viajero, which is some part of the Rosales Saga, some of the characters in these books reappear. The novel Poon was published with a new title, Dusk, Poon, which is the first book of the Rosales Saga, and an introduction by the author in 1998. The same company published part 2 and 3 of the Rosales Saga, 
Three and My Brother the Executioner as Don Vicente, a novel in two parts. In the same year, a selection of his essays was published with the title In Search of the World, Selected Essays of Francisco Chanel Jose. In 2001, Francisco Chanel Jose was rewarded in the Philippines with the title National Artist of Literature. So if somebody asks you if who is the National Artist for Literature in the Philippines, uh, Francisco Chanel Jose is the answer. That same year, he published the novel Ben Simcol, which was later followed by The Molave and The Orchid and the other children's stories. This, I believe, meanings from life in literature essays. Vibora, Sherds, Muse, and Balikbayan, the feet of Juan Pacna. So, despite being old, old, he still published a lot of novels and short stories. Until shortly before he passed away, in January 6, 2022, he wrote down his thoughts and opinions in his blogs and columns he called Hindsight that he write from the newspaper Fieldstar. That come. According to Francisco Chanel Jose, I will be 90 very soon, an old man by any, stand, by any standard with so much insight, which is the lowest form of wisdom to understand why we continue to be poor, why there's so much injustice ravaging this nation, and, that why, well, and why wealth is coveted by so few. And more than ever, I cling to this belief that our freedom is not in the hands of our very rich, but in our very poor, and that is in their power to ban banish these inequities if they band together and realize that in their hunger they come. Finally, from his blog, Before the Curtain Falls. Mine wasn't a rich life, but was such much better than the drudgery I came from. I worked very hard to do that and hope as well as I gave voice to what so many in my countrymen had aspired for. With what I have written, I hope that some may now understand themselves better, so that they can also live with themselves. I hope that I have also brought some light to the blackest corners of, the, of their minds, their hearts, their very homes, and I have given them memory to, so that they will remember. Before, the, before curtain falls, I have always suspected that somebody out there likes me, al allowed me to live this long, gave me a companion who stood by me in the darkness night, forgave my sins, nurtured and nagged me, so I'd be able to write and give all of you a bit of myself. My wife, she gave all herself to me. So that is the life, the career and the death of Francisco Chanel Jose. Thank you so much for listening.